This video will provide students an introduction to American literature. At this point in time, students should think about how much they currently know about American literature. By the end of the video, the goal is for students to be able to identify the features in American literature. First, we're going to focus on the basics. What is literature? Why do people read literature? Why is it necessary for you to study literature? How can we define American literature? What are the basic qualities of American writers? And how can we study literature? The definition of the 14th century defined literature as meaning polite learning through reading. A man of literature or a man of letters was equivalent to a man of wide reading literacy. The definition of the 18th century defined literature as practice and profession of writing. During the 19th century, literature was defined as the high skills of writing in the special context of high imagination. Robert Frost defined literature as performance in words. The modern definition of literature and the definition that we will focus on is defining literature as language artistically used to achieve identifiable literary qualities and to convey meaningful messages. Literature is characterized by beauty of expression and form and by universal intellectual and emotional appeal. Why is it necessary for you to study literature? For one, it improves your language proficiency. It also enriches your knowledge about the English culture. And reading literature or studying literature also helps you explore the nature of human beings by giving you spiritual and psychological relief. Literature is appealing because of the relationship to the human experience. We tend to read for pleasure, to acquire knowledge, to confront experiences, for artistic appreciation, and for relaxation. How can we study literature? And more specifically, how will we study American literature? One way we will approach the text during the next 10 weeks is the analytical approach. Within this approach, Students should become familiar with the elements of a literary work. For example, focusing on the plot, the character, the setting, the point of view, and the goal should be able to answer some basic questions about the text itself. Another way we approach the text is a thematic approach. And within this approach, we will aim to identify the themes and motifs that reoccur within the text. Our goal is to answer the question, what is the story about? What is the poem, the play, or the essay about? Furthermore, we will also look at each text from a historical point of view. By doing this, our goal is to illustrate the historical development of literature. In addition, we will look at the historical events that occurred during the same time the text was produced, and also look at how these events influenced the writer's decision to discuss the ideas discussed within the text. Now the question then becomes, what is American literature? American literature is written a literary work produced in the area of the United States in colonial America. America was once a series of British colonies on the eastern coast of the present day United States. This literary tradition began as a closely linked branch off of the broader British literary tradition. As time progressed, the literary tradition began to expand and take on characteristics which separated from the traditions of British literature. Some basic qualities of American writers are that the writing is very independent. The writing is also individualistic. The writing is critical and innovative. American literature has greatly influenced the world since the 20th century, influencing Chinese and Canadian writers and French poets, just to name a few. Here are some major periods of American literature. This course will cover part one to part three, and the basics is the literature of colonial America up until the literature of Romanticism. It is generally held that Christopher Columbus discovered the American continent in 1492. The writings of Christopher Columbus were included within the colonial period, which began from approximately 1607 to 1765. The early writings of American literature has allowed us to gain a better understanding of history. These earliest forms of literature were pamphlets and writings. They were written to praise the benefits of the colonies. 
they were also written for European and colonist audiences. The first settling of English people happened in Jamestown, Virginia, a hundred years after Columbus discovered America. Captain John Smith was the first one to establish the permanent English settlement, and he is also considered to be the first American author. It was not until 1760s, another hundred years later, that people began to call themselves Americans, distinguishing their identity from their European ancestors. Here's a brief historical introduction. At the beginning of the 17th century, the vast continental area that was to become the United States had been probed only slightly by English and European explorers. The English settlements in Virginia and Massachusetts began the mainstream for which we recognize as the American national history. Almost 100 years earlier, the Caribbean islands, Mexico, and other parts of Central and South America had been occupied by the Spanish. The earliest settlers included Dutch, Germans, French, Spaniards, Italians, and Portuguese. The United States of America grew out of religious controversy. Monarchs desired to expand their empire, and settlers yearned for land. All contributed to the forming of the American civilization. But the colonies that became the first United States were for the most part English, sustained by English traditions, ruled by English laws, supported by English commerce, and named after English monarchs and English lands. Compared with other Western literature, diversity became the outstanding feature of American literature. The growth of colonial America into the United States has been recorded through literature, which began as reports in an exploration of explanation in colonization. So the question is, the early settlers on the American continent later became the founding fathers of the American nation. So who were these people and why did they come? Most of the immigrants came because they were hungry and America offered them good and extensive land. They didn't describe their good fortune in their letters home, attracting more people to come. Others came to escape religious persecution. While those who were considered undesirable or criminals were sent here by the English because they were not considered good citizens as far as England was concerned. Almost all literature come from humble origins, diaries, journals, letters, sermons, travel books, etc., so did American literature. As the previous slide informed us, the literature expanded because the settlers were describing their life in this new America. In the colonial period, personal literature occupied a major position in the literary scene. In content, they served either guide or the expansion or both. In form, they were mainly imitations of the English tradition. The first American literature was neither American nor really literature. It was not American because it was the work mainly of immigrants from England. It was not literature as we know it, in the form of poetry, an essay, or fiction, but rather an interesting mixture of travel accounts and religious writings. This quote is very important in understanding American literature. So ask yourself, what do you know about the Puritans? The Puritans existed within the colonial period of American literature, the 1620s to 1783. The forms of writing included histories, diaries, chronicles, poetries, and sermons. They explained biblical quotations, interpretations, and they applied what they wrote about to the life of the Puritans. It has been argued without the Puritans, there would be no American literature. Most of the early settlers were Puritans, a group of serious religious people who advocated strict religious and moral principles. They wanted to purify the English church and to restore simplicity. They wanted to live a hard and disciplined life, opposed pleasure in art. They believed that the Bible was the revealed word of God. Therefore, people should guide their daily behavior with the Bible. The Puritans brought with them a philosophy of life, which is popularly known as American Puritanism. A dominant factor in American life, Puritanism was one of the most enduring and shaping influences in American thought and American literature. American Puritanism is a two-folded cultural heritage, one being religious and the other practical. Puritans were therefore called practical idealists or doctrinaire opportunists. They influenced American values by urging others to succeed and exceed. They also believed that hard work was necessary for happiness. They also imposed that conviction that Americans are the chosen people. 
The Puritans' metaphorical mode of perception brought American literary symbolism into beginning. To the pious Puritans, the physical world was spiritual, nothing but a symbol of God. The world, therefore, was one of multiple meanings. This idea was distinguishable in the works of Emerson, Hawthorne, Melville, and Poe. This developed itself into symbolism. The Puritan style of writing is characterized by simplicity. The style of their writing was fresh, simple, and direct. The rhetoric plain and honest. Their words were simple and spare and not fancy. Their style was tight in logic and structure, precise and compact within expression. They avoided rhetorical decoration and the adoption of homely imagery. Their form, they were good at writing history and biography was once a popular form of literature for the Puritans. American let the revolution focus on two major things, politics and patriotism. The political writers of the time period was Benjamin Franklin. He wrote Poor Richard's Almanac in the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. Also Thomas Paine, who wrote Common Sense in the Rights of Man. After post-independence, many American writers produced works which presented a significant historical discussion of governments and politics. The most significant writers of the time included politicians such as Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, and Patrick Henry. The early literature of the newly formed nation struggled to find a voice that was uniquely American. So the post-independence writers, they struggled for the American voice. Their texts mimicked the styles and forms of European writing, but were set in the newly formed nation. Many critics viewed these texts as inferior. As the United States geared up for war against Great Britain, an increasing desire to produce uniquely American literature emerged. Several key figures emerged with the War of 1812. Washington Irving, he is credited as the first writer to develop a style uniquely American. Edgar Allan Poe wrote short stories which pushed the boundaries of fiction. He also developed the genres mystery and fantasy. Remember when engaging with the text during the next few weeks, it is important to keep an open mind and try your best to connect with the text whether through history or with your own personal life.